What important idea do you believe is true that many others uh, don't agree with you on? Maybe uh, it's a tough question. You might have yeah. to think about that one, but it was well, very specific like which Sorry. material to use or something about a particular <laughs> project, or um, it could be grand priorities on missions. I think one you actually mentioned is interesting is like um, the thing we should be looking for is like colonization of space versus colonization of planets, meaning like- yes. uh, That's probably my best hot take that people would just agree with take. me on is life in floating cities as opposed to <laughs> life on- on the surface. How do you envision that like spread of humans? Cause you said at the beginning of the conversation, something about like scale, increasing the scale of basically humans in space. Are they just like in, um, they're in orbit and then they get a little farther and farther out. Like, do you see this kind of uh, floating cities just getting farther and far from earth? They can always kind of return. But you, like, if you look, a few centuries from now, do you just see us all these like floating like amoeba, cities? Just yeah. like, right. and it just kind of en envelops uh, the space around us in these like neighborhoods. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and these there's, like rural, and there's like oh, giant structures, and there's small yeah. pirate structures and that pirate kind of stuff. Structures, yeah. I think low Earth orbit might come to look like that, and it's a really interesting regulatory challenge to make sure that. Um, there's some cross purposes. So the more cool space cities we have in orbit, the more shiny objects in the night sky, the worse it is for astronomers in a really kind of overly simplified case. So there's some pushback to this like amoeba-ing where we just grow kind of um, incongruously uh, or indiscriminately as an amoeba in low Earth orbit. Beyond that, though, I think we'll grow in pockets where there are resources. So we won't just expand around the gravity well of Earth. We'll do some development around the moon, some development around asteroids, some development around Mars, because there'll always be purposes for which we want to go down to a physical object and study it or extract something or learn from it. But I think we'll grow in fits and starts in pockets. Um, some of the coolest pockets are the gravity-balanced pockets, like mm -hmm. the Lagrange points, mm -hmm. which is where we just sent, we, not me personally, but NASA just sent uh, James Webb, the big telescope. I think it's at L2. So, uh, What's the nice feature about those pockets? So it's a stable orbit. Um, there are several different Lagrange points. And so it just requires less energy to stay where you're trying to stay. Yeah, that's fascinating. What's also yeah. fascinating is the interaction between nations that was on that be... regard, like who owns that? Do you, would, you, would you say in those floating cities, do you envision independent governments that was going to be my next answer to you, which pushed me harder for a more prov uh, provocative question where I might disagree with other people. I don't yet have my own opinions fully formed on this, but we are trying to figure out right now what happens to the moon with all of these first come, first served actors just arriving and setting precedents that might really affect future access. And one example is property rights. We do want companies that have the expertise to go to the moon and mine stuff that will help us, uh, you know, develop a human settlement there or a gateway. But companies need to know generally that they have rights to a certain area or that they have some legal right to sell things that they're getting. Does that mean we're going to grant property rights on the moon to companies? Who has the right to give that right away? So there's a bunch of really kind of gnarly questions that we have to think about, which is why I think we need space lawyers. Maybe that's the true <laughs> provocative answer is I think we need space true. lawyers. True. I mean, what, yeah, yeah. I mean, but those questions, again, as you said eloquently, will help us answer questions about here on we Earth. We hope so, yeah. It, it is a little strange. I mean, it's obvious, but it's also strange if you look at the big picture of it all that we draw these like borders around geographical areas and we say, this is mine. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, and then we fight wars over what's mine and not. There, there. It seems like there, there's possible alternatives, but also it seems like there needs to be a public ownership of some parts. Something. Um, like you know, what is it, Central Park in New York? It's <laughs> there's something like preserving the commons. Yeah, the commons. Commons. That's why we titled the book "Into the Anthropocosmos." We know it's a long kind of a mouthful. But this notion of the Anthropocene, 
uh, we have a lot of commons problems in humanity. How are we treating the earth, global climate change? How are we going to treat and behave in space? How can we be responsible stewards of the space commons? And I would love to see an approach to the moon that is commons-based, but it's hard to know who would be the protector or the enforcer of that. And if it's, which it will be probably in the early days, a lot of companies yeah. sort of working on the moon, working on Mars, working out in space, it feels like there still needs to be a civilian representation of like the greater effort or something like that. Yeah. Like where there should be a president, there should be a democracy yeah. of some kind where people can vote. Some they representative could, government. Those are all again the same the same human questions. 